it's really cool. Uh -oh. Did it? It's really nice in there. But no, what happens when it does? Assuming. so people can have a chance to call in. Um, I got the wrong number. Well, now we have the right phone number, and it works. <laughs> so who's on the line right now? Are you recording right now? Okay. I just start with okay. Are we resuming the march? Yes. 13, is that 12? Yes. Months? You want to officially open? March 13th, is that right? Uh, no, it would be the... You will call the recessed March 17th, 2020 special session back to order. Yep. Let's give it a few minutes. We had a little bit of trouble with the phone. So uh, <coughs> let's give people a chance to call in. So how did Char break her hand? She uh, fell down. Her good. wrist or arm or um, say that again? Wrist or arm or wrist broke her wrist. <laughs> right hand. At work or home or what? Uh, she broke it. Uh, this is all being home. all being recorded, but yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Dave, what, um, Mike, what number do you want me to call him to call? I'll call him. Um, the call in number is, they gave me the wrong call in number. You got it. So I'm going to go back to my desk and send it back out to everybody. But the number is 218 763 8245. The one I have is 8246. I'm going to go send that out. All right, I'll call Dave directly, though. Yes, sir. Yeah. Just a Perfect. second, I'm going to give you a different number. Here's Mr. Shrepp right here. You got him. Hey, Dave. 218-763-8245. You get that? 218-763-8245. Okay, I'll try that. Bye. I gave you the wrong number to start with. Was Gary calling in? Yeah. Gary was going to come. Huh? I think Gary was going to come. Yeah, somebody just said that he's coming. He's probably outside banging on the door, having somebody wave at him. No, I'm not. Oh, I'm teasing. Aaron hasn't gotten out of the house for a while. Hello, this is Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Hello. <coughs> so who else is calling in the engineer? Yes. Dave needs to be calling in. Um, Brad Person will be calling in. Who? Brad Person.
was Gary going to always come in? Mike, do you know? So. I didn't think he was going to. Sometimes things don't quite. They all have it. Okay. I can put one up if you want to throw one up for him in Gary's spot. I left one for him. Okay. Thank you. I wonder if we could start with a big partner for one of the other things first. Well, let's open the meeting first. Gary's, we'll coming. Online. Gary's, here. Gary's coming in, and Brad is the only one that I'm aware of that we don't have. I mean, there could be more, but that's all that I have notes of. Okay, uh, everybody, we're going to call the meeting. We're going to resume the special ses ses session meeting of March 17th. I guess that's it, huh? All right, all right. So because this is a telephone meeting, uh, what we're going to do is take roll call of city staff to see who is on the line. And I apologize for the snafu at setting up the staff. We were provided an incorrect number to call into. That has been fixed. The meeting an announcement, I've reset that to everyone on the original announcement. So if you have members that continue calling in and, and contact them, uh, please do so so they have a chance to call in. So let's uh, go ahead and do roll call. And Cheryl will mark uh, who's here and we'll keep track of who's on the phone and who's in person. And uh, when I call your name out, please respond by yes. <coughs> David Nevin. Yes. John Andrews. Here. Gary Hecox. Yes, here. Aaron Herzog. Here. David Shrupp. Here. Mike Holland. Um, city staff, TJ Groman. John Colstead. Eric Lee. Here. Chip Lowmiller. Here. Mike Linus. Here. Jane Monson. Charlene Nelson. Ted Strand. Here. Cheryl Stuckmeyer. Here. Garrett Swanson. Any staff attending that I did not say your name? City Attorney Brad Person. Bill Martin. Bolton Mank. Dave Reese Woodseth. Here. So who just buzzed in? Brad. Brad Person? Brad Person, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, for the press, is, do we have a representative from the Echo online? Do 
We have a representative from Northland Press on the line. Okay. Uh, did you know John Colstead? Send the Northland Press and the Echo to your number? Thank you. Um, Paul said he wouldn't be calling in. Okay. All right, well, so go ahead, let's get started. Uh, item two of the one date is March 19th from WSM with the recommendation for bid award for day to day sanitary sewer extension. Do you want to cover that, Dave Reese? Yes. So, <clears throat> this is our letter of recommendation for award of the project for Daga Bay Road Sanitary Sewer Extension. It's uh, recommend, recommending the low responsible bid of RL Larson excavating at $255,402.35. I'll answer any questions the council may have. I have one. Uh, Dave, any experience with uh, the company other than that they met the mid specs? Yes, we, our company has had several projects where they were the successful bidder and uh, they're good contractors. Thank you. Are there any concerns with the timing of the project with them, Dave? None. Uh, known at this time, we have a milestone completion date of April 23rd for them to get the sanitary sewer extended to the new city hall. And then the uh, final completion is around the 1st of June or so. And that's not going to interfere with the project, I mean the city hall project. to coordinate with high tech construction and also to coordinate traffic controls for residents access and other public services. Okay, I was under the impression it was all supposed to be done by the end of April. That's kind of why I questioned that. Not the whole project. They're required to get the service to the city hall by April 23rd. Okay, that's all I have. They're not going to have the road paved uh, or any of that until late April in the main. And the paving will go to City Hall and stop, I assume, huh? I expect once they have dewatering going, they're going to keep going past the City Hall. Yeah, hopefully. Okay. Get all the underground in. I guess one question, Dave. Why did Pratt not turn in an estimate? And that's just a personal question I have. Do you know? Uh, I don't know. Maybe they have enough work already. But they were given a packet but just didn't respond. Well, they, they weren't uh, you know, given special attention for packets. They have access to all of the advertising sources, so... Yeah. You know, they monitor Quest CDN where this is posted statewide. It was in the official city newspaper. So So they just didn't respond to it. They didn't respond to it. They weren't a plan holder. Okay, any other comments? So we're gonna stop at City Hall. I thought we were going all the way through. We're going all the way through. It's just uh, they have to have it at least to the city hall by April 23rd. Thank you. Questions? Dave Strupp on the line, do you have any questions on this? Uh, no. Uh, the only thing I noticed was uh, the difference between the estimates and the bid. The watering was like. Uh, they, they figured $8,000 more, and topsoil was more money. I don't know, it's like uh, $4,500 for topsoil. So there might have been some other ones, but it's a, it's a bit like, uh, you know, 20 grand higher. <coughs> yeah, that's 
That's the street value at this point in time of bidding. Yep. So I'll make a motion we approve it. I second. Okay, we got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? You're going to do a roll call? I can do Right. I can do a roll call. Okay. Uh, Dave Nevin? Yes. Aaron Herzog? Yes. Gary Hecox? Yes. Dave Shrub? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. <coughs> Dave? We have all yeses here. Uh, <coughs> motion carries. All yeses. All right. Uh, Dave Reese, do you want to take item three? Sure. So the item three is in regard to the uh, water quality project that the city uh, and county received a grant for up on Highway 66 at Manhattan Point Boulevard. So four bids were received. The low bidder was D. Chantel Excavating of Brainerd. Um, their bid was $414,965.80. Um, our estimate was $439,468. And uh, there is quite a range in the rest of them, um, being quite a bit higher. So our recommendation is to award this contract to D. Chantel Excavating. Um, we've also done work with them on prior projects, and um, I believe they were the contractor that completed the water quality project in Manhattan Beach up on Trout Lake. Dave Reese, I see that your uh, the engineer's estimate is actually quite a bit higher. Is that uh, we're not shortchanging anything, or are we with the, the lower bid? Well, um, given the contractor's locality to the project, their prior experience with these types of precast um, separators that are required in this contract, and uh, my understanding is they did a very similar project in Baxter here in the last couple of years. Um, I think he's he's uh, confident that he can do it for that price. Okay, that answers it. Thank you, Dave. The fill that's coming out of there, where is that going? Is that was specified to come back to City Hall? Uh, the contractor will take that material. It's it's his material to take, but he'll probably be looking for a place to put it. So if if the city speaks with him about relocating it and putting it at the city hall property, that's something that can be discussed. Okay. I thought we were going to try to fill that hole up with it. Yeah. I think you want to see what that material actually looks like when it comes out. It, it may have some debris in it. Ted is going to speak to that. Organics. Well, and there's a lot of things timing, too. We might have City Hall paved and the road paved, and we don't want DeChantel hauling down our new brand new road or across our brand new parking lot to be filling a pond in behind. So there's a lot of things that got to take place for that, that, that to happen. So I think that's why it didn't get mired into the, the project. If it comes to be and, and it's before we, uh, we get into paving on our project at New City Hall, or the road, then fine. But otherwise, I don't think it'll happen as part of the project. So, okay. okay. May I ask uh, who just dialed in? Uh, sorry, this is uh, Dan with the Echo Journal. Okay, thanks, Dan. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Any other questions on it? I don't have any. Does anybody? I move with we accept the T. Chantel <laughs> bid. I'll second that bit motion. Okay, got a motion by Andrew, a second by Herzig. Okay, let's do a roll call vote. vote. Uh, Dave Schrum? Uh Yes, because uh, the people speak a little louder into their microphone. Okay, so noted. Hard, hard to hear. Yeah. Okay, so John Andrews? 
Yes. Gary Hecox? Yes. Aaron Herzog? Yes. Dave Devon? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, great. Uh, Dave Reese, can you take item four, two, also? Okay. Uh, this is the resolution approving plans and specifications and ordering advertisement for bids for a wild wind ranch drive project. Uh, this is a project that um, was initiated by the city and so it requires a four fifth load. And um, this is, uh, if you recall, we had the public hearing, received some comments from residents on it, and we're taking those into consideration to wrap up the plans here. So we need your four-fifths vote on this one to advertise. I so move. I'll second. Motion by Andrew, second by Herzig. Any other discussion? We'll do another roll call vote. Uh, Gary Hecox? Yes. Aaron Herzog? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Dave Nevin? Yes. Shrupp. Dave Shrupp? Yeah. Okay, motion carries. Okay, I'll start us off with item five. Uh, item five is an uh, update on what our budget was and where I think we're going with 2020 road projects. Um, so what you have in a hard copy in front of you is our 2020 budgeted project for public works. Um, and then the second part of that cover sheet is showing how are we planning to pay for these projects. Um, in certain instances, we were going to use funds carried over from 2019, meaning cash. We were go we were planning to issue a special assessment bond to cover um, the Daggett Pine Big Pine Trail and the road reconstruction for the overlays. So the the idea was to issue a bond in, in the, the amount of about a million dollars, including issuance costs. A large portion of that would be assessed on Big Pine Trail, and we would go ahead and. Uh, do those projects. Um, the remainder of, of that public works budget was to be paid for by out of dollars out of the current year levy, meaning money we're collecting this year. So when we decided to delay the Big Pine Trail back in February, I think it was February 24th, if memory serves me, um, that throws a wrench in how we want to do the, if we want to still want to do road overlays. So the idea was to try to keep up with the road plan. If you remember back a, a few years ago, we did a uh, capital improvement plan for roads. We went and we had a public hearing and asked the public, do you like our road plan or not? And if you like it, great, no comments, then we'll go ahead and approve it. And by statute, that allows us to issue general obligation debt against that road plan to provide funds for that road. So we've got a couple questions here for council. One is, if you still want to do the overlays that were in the budget for 2020, our option right now is to pay cash down out of our existing city funds, meaning we would have to spend down our, our cash reserves to do that. Um, so we're looking to you folks to ask which direction you'd like to go with that. A couple of our options are we could spend our money that we already have, spend down our fund balance. We could push these projects into another year and combine them with another project when we're ready to do that. Or you could direct staff to um, update the capital road program, have another set of public hearings, and still try to get some roads done this year financed by bond. <coughs> All of those are options. So I guess I'd like to know what your thoughts are on that. My need, me a thought would be to put the road overlays off to next year when you could bond for those along with whatever else needs to happen. What are the what happens if we did put that off a year for the overlays? Um, I'll try to answer for Ted. What that would do is you'd see a further deterioration in those roads 
and then we need to reevaluate those roads and determine whether they would still be viable to do an overlay or reconstruction. It was my understanding. Is that correct, Dave Reese? Yes, every year we need to take a look at them and uh, probably in the intermediate time they'd have to, we'd have to look at broadening the crack ceiling program. So with that said, we could look at reallocating current budget funds to expand the crack ceiling program or we could allocate unbudgeted funds out of our reserves to do that too. For the lesser amount. Mike, yeah. Mike, this is Dave Shrub. Okay. Uh, why are we having this question today? Well, if we're going to do something with roads, um, we would like to bid them with some of these other projects for efficiencies of scale. Right. And yeah. If the intent of the council is to go forward with a road, either road reconstruction and not assess it, we need to update our, our uh, capital plan so that we're prepared to issue bonds against it so we have a funding source next year. But, well, haven't we already initiated at least two projects that are assessed? They're partially assessed, wow. yes. And how can we change in midstream? We're not changing in midstream. Okay. Now let me ask you another question. Is Big Pine Trail off the book for this year? Yes. And how does that happen? Because when I'm reading the notes, it says there was a motion made on 224 by Dave Nevin, seconded by Aaron, to delay the Big Pine Trail road improvement project for at least one year. The voting was two said yes and two said no. And then it says the project will not proceed because the four fifth council was required. Should that mean that the project will not be delayed because there was not a four fifth council vote? I'm kind of confused on what happened. Eventually well, it looks like it's not delayed. Well, it's not approved either. Um, Brad Person, could you maybe chime in on that? Well, yeah, I mean, I'll get the confusion there. I mean, the, the motion was to table. It failed for lack of majority, but to Mike's point, I mean, the, the, that was a rule of the motion to approve, which we did not have four votes for. So it, we assume it's not happened because we couldn't even get three votes to, you know, it, we didn't get four votes to do anything. Um, so it's, it's, we don't have a, a motion, I guess, technically that says that for sure, but the timing to do it this year is coming down. We had a public meeting and there was not the most necessary to approve the project. So we assume as staff it's not happening in 2020. But that, the, the, would that question be to the question should or the motion should have been to continue with it? I mean, it was just four votes up to approve and it didn't happen. I mean, we didn't have power. They tried to, they had, we had four votes to stop the, the project, and that didn't happen either. So, aren't technically it's still in the plan, and is, is the loss of this project the reason why you're asking questions, Mike? Yes, because so, the, the funding for right. the overlays was to be included in the bond issue for this project. To make a large enough bond. Correct. Right. So, Given we already have assessed, and I know there's an issue with assessments, but that should be worked out in the months ahead. Why wouldn't we continue with this project? Well, we didn't approve we the assessment. Messing, we're messing up our finances. We don't have an approval to assess the project, is the point. We don't have approval well, we to go forward. Done, we have done two, and we have a policy. And I don't see the policy going away. Anyone we, have like to, we have to officially kill the policy if we don't want a policy. And I guess I'm not in favor of that. Sure, and, and that's why staff are asking the question, um, what do you want to do? 
because we don't have approval to stop and we don't have approval to go forward. So we're, we're at a standstill in Brad Hanson. And at that meeting, this is Ted, uh, at that meeting we did tell those people in that were here that it was tabled for a year, so. There were a lot of people that were in attendance from that community, that neighborhood, and they were unanimously against it. Yep. I, I don't know if you could hear me or not, Dave. Yeah, Aaron had mentioned there were a lot of the residents that were in attendance at that meeting, and the overwhelming majority at that meeting was they didn't want it done this summer. The Any under other <coughs> well, we also did not approve the assessment for that road project that night. My only comment is if the people don't want to do the road and we can get a few more years out of it, I think that's the way that we should pursue it and, and to take a look at roads. You know, and we could do that with whatever roads you got for overlay this year. It, it just seems to me that oftentimes we will approve something not knowing what we're approving. You've got a list of roads that are scheduled to be approved or overlaid. But, you know, is Cool Haven Lane necessary right now? I'm, I'm not real familiar with it. I mean, I need to take a look at it, but... It's at its life life right now that if you're going to do it, it's the time to do it. Otherwise, it'll otherwise go to a rebuild as the, in the next few years. Yeah. Well, one of my concerns when we keep putting projects off is all of a sudden we're going to get hit with a multi-million dollar year and all kinds of projects that are going on that's going to tie up our public works director. And that's that's not a healthy thing either. You know, one of the things I asked Mike about it was moving other overlays up and, and bonding for that, but I don't know if we can. That was one of the questions I asked him, so. Right, we would have to firm up our new capital improvement plan have the public hearing like we did when we did um, Manhattan yep. and identify the amount in the plan that we expect to bond for in the, over the next short term, five years. Uh, and then, we're, then the council can, at its discretion, determine if they want to issue bonds for that. Part of the debate comes in with how do we want to handle road assessments? Um, nobody likes to get assessed, but we still have to find a way to pay for the roads. And in this instance, for this year, we can either pay cash for them out of our reserves, we can delay until next year, or we can com combine them with a, uh, a larger project and try to um, identify more roads that we wanted to, to overlay and bond for those. It's really up to you folks. So, Mr. Shrupp is saying that the assessment has been approved. We've got an assessment policy. But when we went to assess on Big Pine Tra Trail, there were some hiccups on it. And that's why we didn't agree to it. You know, on Dave, on, on Wildwood and Ranch Road, they were all the same, made sense, it was easy to go through. We get into these other ones and there's some discrepancies. And for an example, the two acre lot was 2,000 bucks and a half acre or a one acre lot was 4,000. So there's some discrepancies there that I certainly am uncomfortable with. Sure. Um, and that's why we didn't, you know, that's why that didn't move forward. And, and every project will be different. Right. You know, it's in a different area. The, the land values are different. They're on different lakes. or different portions of similarly. So, um, again, at this point, um, I think at a minimum, we want to try to reallocate some funds to step up the, the crack ceiling. At the, this year, the roads took a really bad with this freeze thaw this year. Uh, roads that have never cracked are cracked this year. Um, as an example, um, uh, what's the one that connects the backside over here off a of log landing? Uh, I just went blank. Anyway, it, it, we'd never really showed anything before. The whole road is alligatored now. It's just one big massive breakup. My neighborhood had been a few, you know, every 20, 25 feet. Well, there's ones in between it and longitudinal cracking now. And uh, that's the whole town is like that. So minimum, minimum, we need to step up how much crack ceiling we do. We have 40000 that's allocated for this year so far. Um, Dave and I talked to, and we talked, if you're going to 
kind of looking at the whole town, we're talking probably $150,000 to do the whole town in crack ceiling. In addition or in total? In total was what we're thinking. So we need to increase by 60000 <laughs> 110,000. 110, we're at 40. We need to go to about 150, 160. So. Okay. Ted, if I remember a previous meeting, a comment was made that if we did um, overlay, that that doesn't solve a crack ceiling problem, that the cracks will come back with the overlay. What you do is when you do an overlay is you're, you're filling the crack first with a crack seal, and then you're putting an inch and a half on it. And that's going to give you that 20, 25 year of life expectancy. You can just keep trying to do crack sealing and get it, but you're still in the overlays. You're still going to get the ref reflective cracking. It's still going to come through. But you're making it so that road is going to make that 25 years. Overlay is a whole lot cheaper than taking going into reconstruction re and total rebuild. So, Thank you. Ted, are we better off looking at crack sealing this year and find out how many streets, how much we have to actually do the overlay on for starting next year. Well, is there, does there need to be a new evaluation? And that's what Dave and I are ready to do now. We're ready to, the roads have cleared off, we're ready to go do that now. We just want to know which direction the council want us to do. Do you want us to come up with a new five-year plan and reevaluate all the roads? Do you want us to just up the crack ceiling budget? Do you want to do overlays on some of it that we talked about that was already pre-approved to do in this budget. What are you, where do you want us to go? Well, it was approved for this budget as far as overlays. I'd like to see that done. Because what but we're I talking about this year. I understand the one street's put off. I understand that. Yeah, okay. what, what, it, what was approved for overlay this year was Whitefish Avenue, Hilltop, Woodland Drive, Cool Haven, and Summit. So essentially everything on Manhattan is getting either a seal coat or a um, overlay over it. So essentially Manhattan will be taken care of probably for the next 20, 25 years. Okay. Is an overlay an accessible event? No. That was, we, in our policy, we made that a maintenance thing. But it's a 20 or 25 year fix. It'll, it'll, if, if it's done right, it'll give you that 20, 25 years fix. And why wouldn't that fall into the accessible? Why, why couldn't we do an assessment on that? We just considered it, the other cities and when we looked at other policies, everybody just considered a routine maintenance. And it's a lot cheaper yeah. doing an overlay than a complete. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I have a question. How much, how much, um, so the concern you have is you hate, we were going to spend, you were going to update with the bond, you were going to get. Yeah. It's about a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was in the old plan, yes. Months, you know, that, that gets the window off there a little further to get the price. 
Those are the issues. We just kind of need a direction for this year. Where do we go? Well, I would, if we're all sitting here, I'll say that we should crack seal this year and take a close look at it and see what to do next year. So is that a motion? Should I make a motion to that and see if anybody heard that discussion? I don't care. I think the longer you put off the overlays that need to be done, I think, is that, I, I need to stop. Is that a motion? Because if it is, I need to stop. Well, let's have a motion and a second, then we can discuss Yeah, okay, I'll okay. second it so we can get okay. into discussion. Okay, we have a motion from Dave Devlin and a second from Okay. Well, the, motion was to, the motion was to crack seal and do a, an evaluation on the road then. The motion was to discuss crack sealing and a reevaluation of the, the road. Okay. My discussion is I think you need to do the overlays this year so we're not just piling them on to a future year and adding to to debt that we're putting out on on, uh, on bonds and whatnot. Um, I, I struggle with that. I understand we're going to have to raise what we do for crack sailing this year, but if we overlay, we don't do any crack sailing out there mm -hmm. on the uh, that one area that Ted talked about, Manhattan. Also, we'll to pay for it out of reserves the way we're planning, as I understand it, if we did overlays this year. How, how much, without me having to sit here and try and add everything up, how, roughly how much are we talking about, Mike? We're talking about $340,000 overlays. 331 340 I, I don't understand why they're not an accessible deal. I mean, why is that? Is that something we need to look at? We could look more into it, but it, we, it, that isn't how we wrote the policy. Right. Typically, what we're finding is when we do a major reconstruction with the full depth reclamation, like we did on Anchor Point and Manhattan Beach, um, some other bigger projects, we assess them. Uh, what a lot of cities are doing is the bigger projects like that, they're accessible, they can see a real benefit, <clears throat> and, it, and it makes a lot of sense to do that. Um, the maintenance portion, what we're seeing is the overlay part of it, along with the chip ceiling and crack ceiling. The extension of life before the road is rebuilt. Is that accurate, Dave Reeves? Yeah, that's right. Okay. It, it's FDR is an accessible cost because um, really you're looking at the amount of maintenance dollars that you're having to pour into it year after year. It's basically reached the extent of its life and it's time to reconstruct. And an overlay is a maintenance item to you know, about the middle of its uh, expected lifespan and you want to try to prolong that pavement life um, out another 15, 20 years. Okay, Dave, but so the Big Pine Trail Road that we had talked about doing was a 20 or 25 year road, right? The remove and replace reconstruction? Was it 20 that, or... That road Okay, so we got 20 years out of it. It's, it's, it's uh, gotten to the point where it's got cracks across, transverse cracks across it every 10 to 15 feet or so in a lot of places. Not everywhere, but to the point where it's, it's not of any benefit to overlay it again. It, it needs to be totally reclaimed. Okay, Dave, so can I can I say this? Is Dave, you got to remember the Big Pine was probably originally paved in the early '80s, late '70s was the first time, and then it was redone. So really, you're looking at the base of that thing is probably 40 years old throughout road base. So that's a reconstruction, though. That was yeah. why we were going to full and, depth reconstruction, and, and that's why it's accessible. Yeah. Okay. So the whole problem we have here is we didn't bond for Little Pine Road and make that bond to cover all this other stuff. We listed a bunch of people out in the audience. Well, we did bond enough to cover it all, but we just took the big project out of it. Yeah, well. Right, so, so the issue is we can still do the road, but it's going to dip into your fund balance. For one so, and, and that's coming out of the phone company money. 
Yes. That's what you're calling resilience. And it, that's what I don't think you want to spend that down because then you're not going to be able to get the bonds that you could well, reduce bond. That's correct. So, so you, you could say still delay it, you could step up, uh, you could ask Ed to rearrange some of his budget to mitigate the cost for upping the crack ceiling and revisit it with the larger project next year? In my in a budget this year, we were going to be putting some automated gates, the county and, there, and us, we were going to be putting automatic gates. Since we put that in the budget and we revisited it, the county and the city have decided not to do that. So we have a line item that's $55,000 on the city side of the budget that we're not going to do this year, that money could be reallocated towards crack ceiling, and there might be some shifting and some other things that we could do in there, too, to... Hey, Mike. Yes. This is Dave again. Um, I want to back up to you, and I had a discussion about financing and the city's assets. Is there any chance that there's some sort of creative financing that if we did use some of the phone company money to help out this year... <coughs> that if we issued a bond next year that we could get some of that repaid officially back to the city? Um, that's harder to do. It's easy to do with the construction project for hard costs because you're right. intending to reimburse yourself with bonds up front. Um, right. It's harder to do on a project you're not assessing. So we've got some options. I mean, I think in the short term, Ted's identified some pieces of equipment um, for so projects. Can we still do Big Pine Trail this year? Uh, I defer that to Dave Reese. Well, to assess it, we have to um, probably go through some more steps in another hearing, and that's pushing things out. <laughs> Quite a ways, you're probably going to get into a period of time of bidding that you're not going to be happy, competitive, happy with. Yeah. So ideally, it, it would be best to push that off for a year, hold the hearings again in January, February of 2021. So why don't we just not do anything this year? And bond it. The new council can bond next year, and they can fix everything. Uh, we'll need an updated capital plan to do that, so we can accurately identify the roads. And Dave and I can tackle that and come up with a new plan that could go through the the process. So that is the motion you have on that you're discussing right now. In which direction would you like to go? So the motion that's on the table is to put another 110 into the pot and do additional crack sealing. Well, it wouldn't even be 110, would it? It would be, because you're less the other amount you just talked about. Well, it would be 110, and we just would be reallocating it from a different place in the budget as we're trying to do. Okay, gotcha. But I mean, so that's... The original motion again, please. The one we already did. The one we're talking about right now. Well, the one, the last, the motion we had that we haven't had a vote on was to do the crack seal and then reevaluate. Okay. Yep. So that's, so that's a motion and a second, so we either got to kill that or move it forward or something. And that's, is this, this is not the four-fifths, so this is majority. Okay. So then we're not going to do any overlays with this motion or any of that. That's correct. Can you, re can you repeat it again? Is it all dealing with adding money to crack ceiling? Uh, the motion deals with Reevaluating the, the road plan and reallocating, upping the crack ceiling budget by reallocating existing funds. Okay, so there's two things in there. All right. Yep. At least you're going to just review the whole road plan period is what you're doing. Period, yes. Okay. I mean, I, a comment if we did something different, if we got another 300 plus thousand out of reserves, we could do overlays this year. Right. So, so Dave, That's the alternative. Aaron has already seconded. This is the discussion right. part of that motion. So, 
Why don't we vote on the motion? I think that needs to get taken yeah, care of. So we have to vote on the motion that's out there right now. Okay, so the motion is to add money to the crack ceiling to a total of $150,000 for this year. I mean, by for, reallocating. Yeah, by reallocating. So we got a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Well, we have to roll call. We have to oh, roll call. call. Okay. Uh, Dave Nevin? Aye. Aaron Herzog? Aye. Gary Decox? Aye. Dave Trump? Yeah, thank you. John Andrews? No. Okay, motion carries 4-1. Okay. Um, item 6 on the agenda is an update on the COVID-19 virus. Anyone have an update you'd like to share? Good afternoon. Um, other than what Chip uh, printed out for me today, uh, according to the Department of Health CDC, uh, there are 262 confirmed cases in Minnesota out of uh, 5,812 uh, tests that have been completed. One death, uh, 21 cases requiring hospitalization, and 15 are still hospitalized as of today. That's about it. I mean, other than just trying to figure out day to day what we're going to so do. So, can and what's you explain tomorrow. the curve that they're talking about that's going to take place this next week? Or could you, Chip? I mean, they're kind of saying that we're going to really go up. And well, I'm assuming that we'll have more tests that are going to be run. So, the more tests that we have run, the more more positive tests we're going to have. So that's going to bring up uh, a lot uh, lot more people. We'll probably, I would guess, probably double at least uh, when the tests get done. Mr. Andrews, you probably have more of an idea than, than I do uh, regarding this. But, you know, the more people we test, the more positives yeah, right. we're going to get. And the other problem you have, you've got all these people coming back from Florida, Arizona, and areas... Florida, if you go to Florida right now, you go into an automatic 14-day quarantine. We have all these people coming back. There's been 19 deaths in Florida, so we're going to bring all these people back to this com country. And uh, I don't see the governor doing anything with that either. I'm not real sure how, how we're going to prevent people from coming home. Um, but you're right, we'll have to deal with, uh, you know, a larger population that has uh, been infected and some of those coming back into this pop into our population uh, as carriers. And the quarantine is, I mean, that's a volunteer quarantine, correct? I mean, volunteer quarantine right, right now. We're not locking in. We're not uh, shelter in place or anything as of now. I know we're not going out doing much, but I think that bubble he's talking about is going to be when it decides to happen. Right, and I think it's just a matter of uh, this time, just matter us of time. being able to control what we can control. Yeah. Uh, we can't necessarily control the people coming home, but we can control our own exposures uh, and, and hope for the best. How are how are you and your staff doing? <laughs> fine. <laughs> Chip, no, we're fine. Chip, how are you and your staff doing? It's been pretty slow. Well, good. That's encouraging. So I heard something last night, and I don't have a clue what it's worth, but somebody said if you wake up in the morning and you can hold your breath for 10 seconds without coughing, you don't have it. I have You <laughs> have or have not? Have not. It's been proven false. It has? Okay. okay. Well, somebody said it to me, and 
As of this morning, according to that, I don't have it. <laughs> the best source of information for here is we have a link on our website that gives you real-time <clears throat> live updates that are published out by the, by the government officials, and this is where you're getting your information mm -hmm. from. So you can click on the, on the city's website. There's a banner right on top that has the most current updates. So you can monitor that, if you will. As far as city admin staff and planning and zoning, all four of us uh, now that Char is injured, um, and Char can work from home too as needed, we're all set up to work from home if necessary, or as it makes sense. So in other words, we'll probably cancel the April meeting. To be determined. Well, the question I had earlier was, are, are all of you other council guys in the council chamber? Yep. Yes. yes. And so is that smart? Well, we're sitting six feet apart. <laughs> Don't know we if that matters We couldn't get the phone to work. Yeah. We had an issue with the phone down. You have them all wiping down their chairs and their desks and everything before they leave? Um, Chip's going to run them through decon. Cheryl did around this morning and we're caught at the doorknob. Oh, all right. Yep. Okay, anything else on uh, item six update on COVID 19 virus? We do have one other item to talk about. No, that's it. Okay, item seven, bill for approval, <coughs> council action and motion. They're listed as item seven in your packet. We need a first and a second. Or, and, uh, we'll so moved. So we got moved a motion. A second. Motion and a second. We have a motion by Herzog, a second by Andrews. Let's do a roll call vote now. Dave Truss? Yes. John Andrews? Yes. Gary Hecox? Yes. Aaron Herzog? Yes. Dave Nevin? Yes. Okay, thank you. Motion carries. Motion carries, yep. <clears throat> so move. Got a motion now, to adjourn. When we adjourn, there's, this is, that means that this Continuation is over, correct? That's correct. This so moved. Okay, we've got a motion. Second. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries.